Blessings, my dear brethren, and welcome to today's devotional that will be based in the second letter of the Apostle Paul to the Corinthians, specifically in chapter 1, as of verse 18. The word of the Lord says as follows, But as God is faithful, our word to you was not yes and no. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, by me, Silvanus, and Timothy, was not yes and no, but in him was yes, in him. For all the promises of God in him are yes, and in him, amen, to the glory of God through us. Now, he who establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us in God is God who also has sealed us and given us the Spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. As always, the Apostle Paul uh, was very deep in his message and very direct. There are three things that today I would like to uh, emphasize from these verses that we have read. In the first place, God is faithful, verse 18. The faithfulness of God uh, throughout history has been more than proven. If something we have not discovered but confirmed and assured like never before during this last year where we were all in lockdown and where so many things have happened is that God is faithful. We have, don't have to uh, wonder because he's never failed us and he will never will. Imagine if he wasn't a faithful God, what would be for, for us when we have problems, when we go through difficulties? when we have all kinds of circumstances adverse and difficult things that god is not with us that he is not faithful it would be a tragedy and a constant pain in our soul for for forever but on the contrary god is faithful which means that he will always be with us that he will always sustain us with the power of his right hand as his word says and he will never change us for other people and he will be with us all the days of our lives. In this changing world of so many disloyalty, of so many hypocrisy, of so many falsehood, we can have the complete assurance, my dear brethren and friends, that the God that we worship, honor, and serve is a, a God that who stands for his faithfulness, fulfilling everything. And the second point is fulfilling all of his promises not like some people some politicians that promise in those big meetings and these speeches that they give in front of people giving all kinds of promises and then when he take charge of office then they forget everything they promise and all that agenda that they had to uh, to their followers to their potential voters so that they would captivate them and win their attention no our God, all that he has promised, all that he promises in his word, as Paul says, is yes and amen in him. There is no ambiguity. There is no doubt. It is not a maybe. It is not like some, it depends. No, my dear brethren, God is faithful and his word is full of multitudes of thousands and thousands of promises are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. This is not to, to say to, the kind of luck, it's not a lottery that you may win or you may not win. You can have the luck to be awarded or not. No, Christian life is not lived according to luck. That's why we do not consult the horoscopes or we don't have to put our hands so that somebody will predict our lives, what is going to happen in the future. No, my dear brethren. We have a God that is faithful, that fulfills his promises, and we have the complete assurance that whatever we read, part of the word of God, is fulfilled in our lives. And the promises of the Lord are not, if I may say, an, a, a candy that they put in our hands to trick us, and that we begin to start thinking on the possibility of putting our lives and our trust in his hands. But then when it comes to the truth, everything was a lie and false and nothing was real. No, my dear brethren, our faith and our trust is put in a faithful God that fulfills each and every one of his promises. And 
He will always give us the best and whatever my life needs. And finally, the Apostle Paul uh, talks about something important that we have already been sealed. We are already marked. We don't have to be afraid of what they say around there that they're uh, uh, branding people. We already were sealed. Nothing more and nothing less that with the Holy Spirit is our sign of identity. God recognizes us perfectly in the midst of crowds, in the middle of the masses. He knows us by name. He knows where we live, how we are, how our being is. And that doesn't depend on circumstances or climate change. It doesn't depend on how I feel because Christian life is not based on feelings or emotions, but on a perfect work in eternal promises, in some prophecies that were fulfilled and that were written in some cases with hundreds of years in advance, attesting to history, attesting to that everything that was written was fulfilled just literally in the person of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's why we don't preach with doubts, we don't preach with uncertainty, but we preach with convince, with full certainty that our God is faithful that the promises that he has left us in the word are yes and amen in Christ Jesus, and that that indelible mark, but true, uh, that is the presence and, and constant presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives is a fact. We're already marked, which is that he recognizes us, that we are protected, that no matter what happens and whatever they say and whatever comes, the protection of God is real, and that our life belongs to our God. Just as the animals are marked with that branding of fire to recognize if that cow or that calf or that sheep is mine or not, we have already been marked. We are sealed in Christ Jesus. Our sign of identity is very clearly defined. Therefore, we don't have to be uncertain and we don't have to have fear or doubt and it's not part of our life, but rather the country. We have managed to overcome the, the fear, the panic, the, the, the overwhelming and doubts when we approach the presence of our God and when we read and scrutinize every day the sacred scripture. They give us encouragement, they give us hope, they strengthen our faith, they guide our steps, and they perfect us from all adversity. And we know that even if we had passed Psalm 23 through the valleys of the shadow of death, we will have no fear in our soul, in our hearts, because He is the Lord our God, is with us, protecting us, supplying each and every necessity, taking care of every little detail of our existence. What a blessing this is. Do you know that God? What is your God? Whom do you worship? Do you know that there are people who believe that they worship God, but in, in deep down in, they don't know Him? And the Lord Jesus Christ said that to the Samaritan women. You worship God that you do not know. We know Him. We have it in our hearts because we have had an encounter and an exper a personal experience with Jesus Christ. And now there is certainty and there is trust and there is a complete and absolute faith knowing that he will never abandon us. Why don't we just, my dear brethren, we just pray and present this day to the Lord and let's pray and ask for his blessing and his support so that he will never again, will be able to doubt of these three things that I have shared with you today briefly. God is faithful, his promises are fulfilled, and we have been sealed by his Holy Spirit. Father in heaven, thank you this morning because you have allowed us the honor and the privilege to start a new day with you. Lord, thank you for that faith that we and absolutely trust that you have put in our lives and in our hearts. We ask you, O oh Lord, all powerful God, that you will be, we will be able to live lives consecrated to you. Keep us and help us and bless us and guide our steps so that we will be able to give testimony to the world of the faithful that you are, of how faithful you are and how your word is fulfilled and that mark and that seal of the Holy Spirit in our hearts, 
in our lives is a fact and a reality. Thank you, Lord, for being revealed to our lives. And we trust in you and we put our lives in your hands. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. Well, my dear brethren, may the Lord bless you greatly. We have in, in front of us a weekend that we're going to leave for the Lord, an intense weekend, which we have among us some visitors from some brethren that have come from other parts of the world to be with us this weekend. And we also have among us Pastor Walter and his wife, Ellie, who will be sharing with us this Sunday in the Church of Puerto La Cruz and in our church in Santa Cruz, the Word of God. And we are expecting uh, what God is going to be sharing with us, and we are encouraged to continue our broadcast through our YouTube, Centro Evangelico Vida Nueva, that the Almighty God, the Creator of the universe, and our Lord Jesus Christ will accompany us, and that His Spirit that dwells in us will guide us through the truth. May the Lord bless you, and blessings to all of you.